Welcome, my friends, to our mini SQL Server 2016 courses here at CBT Nuggets. In this nugget, we're going to cover some of those new features that SQL Server 2016 offers that you'll be learning about throughout these courses. We'll also get up to speed on the tools and components that you'll be working with, and we'll talk about the virtual lab, our hands-on lab environment that you can use to follow along with me throughout these courses. Let's jump in. There's no better place to start than to talk about some of the new exciting features SQL Server 2016 has to offer. Now, I just handpicked a few of my favorites out of the database engine component, but believe me, there are a ton of new features in SQL Server 2016 spanning all of the components and tools that SQL has to offer. And we'll be covering a good majority of them throughout these six SQL Server exams. I saved the best for first, <laughs> because this is easily one of the coolest features to come out of SQL Server 2016. It has so many good uses. System version temporal tables we enable with the flick of a switch, and then SQL Server will track the history, the lifetime of a record, all data modifications against it. This gives us the ability to see what a record looked like at any point in time. Another highly anticipated feature is the query store. This will keep track of our query executions over time and all the performance metrics around them, including execution plans, which will get our, give us much better insight when troubleshooting and optimizing our queries. Next up is one of many new security features. We have things like always encrypted, dynamic data masking, but this one, <laughs> this one is the one we've been asking for for a long time. Row level security. It's finally built into the database engine, meaning we don't need to come up with our own custom solutions to implement row level security. If you're into the cloud, this next feature is for you. The stretch database feature allows SQL Server to transparently migrate cold data up into Microsoft Azure. And the best part is that data is still accessible. You can still query it just as if it was on premise. And uh, this works with cold data. And so if you have tables with both cold and hot data, you can actually write a filter function to define what cold data is. Pretty cool and another feature that's really easy to use. Finally, we have in-memory OLTP. And I know, I know this isn't a new feature, but it's one that continues to evolve and it's still one of the most important features when it comes to performance in SQL Server. Many of the limitations that annoyed us have been removed and it now supports tables up to two terabytes up from 256 gigs. Here's a quick look at all of SQL Server's major components and tools, all of which are covered in the SQL Server 2016 exams at some point. On the component side, we have the database engine. Of course, that is the core component that makes everything tick in SQL Server. We also have SQL Server analysis services. This is our solution for building OLAP and multi-dimensional data solutions. We also have reporting services, SQL Server reporting services. Next up is our reporting solution, SQL Server reporting services. We also have our ETL solution, that's extract, transform, and load in SQL Server integration services. And finally, we can model and manage master data with MDS, master data services. On the tool side, two big ones here. One is our administration management and querying tool, SQL Server Management Studio. We'll be spending a lot of time in there. And the other is our development tool in SQL Server Data Tools. This is actually uh, the replacement for the old Business Intelligence Development Studio, or BIDS for short. When it comes to SQL Server 2016's additions, nothing has changed much. We have the same five flavors that we've had for a while now in SQL Server, starting at the very top with Enterprise Edition. This is the top dog, no scalability limits, and all the bells and whistles you could possibly ask for. Next in line is Standard Edition. And this is the one that most folks generally go with unless they have crazy scalability requirements and they need access to all those high-end features. Next up, we have Developer Edition, and this is essentially Enterprise Edition, just not licensed for production use. So this is good for application developers or QA and testing environments. Web Edition, as the name implies, is designed to host databases that store application, web application-based data. So a lot of the features have been removed that don't really apply to that kind of workload. Finally, we have the free edition, SQL Server Express. Anybody can download and play with this, and it's really aimed at the student and the hobbyist. The last thing we're going to touch on here is our virtual lab, your hands-on environment, again, for following along and getting that crucial hands-on experience with SQL Server. We call these nugget-level virtual labs because every single nugget that has a lab has it tailored to that specific nugget. And by the way, you can tell a nugget has a lab when you see this icon in the upper left-hand corner 
of the intro slide. You can then launch that lab from the right hand side of the course page. So follow along with me click by click, query by query, and also use the lab as your own personal sandbox. You can learn without having to worry about messing up a production environment or your own environment. In this CBT Nugget, we took an introduction to SQL Server 2016. Thanks for joining us here at CBT Nuggets, and thanks for taking this journey with me through Microsoft's incredible database platform. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.